Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. In this case, we're going to break this down today and fix up this old Royal. If you're not familiar, Royal is one of those companies that is now owned by a Chinese company and is really no more because we all know Hoover, Oric, Royal, not so much. So I'm going to go through and break this down and we're probably going to end up having to polish this too. It's, it's pretty bad. Um, gotten secondhand at a thrift store, a friend of mine saw it. I told him I wanted an American-made Royal, and this is, a Ameri this is one of the last American-made Royals. Most of these were actually made in China, and they're, they're not garbage, but they, they sound like crap. Um, so this has a very nice sound once we get this all tuned up and moving. So the first thing I'm going to do is wash the outer bag. So we're going to set that aside. And we're just going to start stripping parts down on the Royal. Now these older ones have thumb screws. Uh, so they weren't put together with a screwdriver. The newer ones, they have, they're like sanitary screws almost what's in there. And they come loose and they have to be put together. So let's just start breaking this thing down. Um, it's meant to be serviced. That's kind of the cool thing about this. Now if you're not familiar, you can see there's an oil hole on the rear for the sleeve bearing. Um, this is not a model with a light, though they did have models with the light. This also has the, uh, the knob adjustment for the height adjustment, which I really like, because you set it once and you just leave it. You don't have to adjust it. Uh, and these don't tend to bend as much and break as much as the newer pedal style, though the pedal style is more convenient, so I understand why they went to that. Um, if you're not familiar with an old school American Royal, uh, they're a direct air machine. They came out about the same time Kirby's did. They sold them in vacuum shops. Kirby sold them door to door. Kirby's were more successful. Uh, and there was a big push in the late 80s and the 90s to sell these. They used to send dealers on cruise ships and all sorts of things. So they have kind of a little cult following because of that. Um, and people really like these machines. And they're nice. Um, but they, they have a reputation for being a really good cleaner. And I, I don't consider them anything special in terms of their cleaning ability. They hit, they've hit the bar of acceptable cleaning ability and that's it for me. I don't think there's anything special going on. Uh, but a lot of people with high airflow machines get super excited. They just don't do anything for me. So first of all, this belt is shot. And that's a style eight belt. Now this is an older style with us uh, sleeve bearings and you can see the end caps on there. Real cheap uh, stuff there. And that was the thing about the Royals. This is uh, a lot simpler to make than a Kirby. They did make models with detachable face plates. Uh, this is not one of them. And you, you'd have to go into the history books about that because they, I think that's a suitor, right? they came to an agreement with Kirby out of quarter. There was some sort of complication like that that happened. Um, now this kind of cool is that I can check the carbon brushes without taking the machine apart. I think that I always kind of appreciate that. So we're going to get a chance to see what this looks like inside in terms of that break that apart so yeah the metal carbon brush covers and you know Kir Kirby Royal and a lot of people get fascinated on the fact it's not made out of plastic well aluminum costs more money to make and is softer and not as uh, nice as a lot of the plastics now I say softer I mean like it's just it it's not as resilient it just really isn't um, as we found over time all right, well, actually, there's some, uh, that's interesting. Looks like maybe this was in the flood or some time because there's a little bit of moisture on this carbon brush or marks. So I'm just going to wipe that off and put that right back in. It could be grease, you know, oil. That's a possibility, too. It's hard to say until we really get in here. And we are going to be really getting in this uh, machine. This is going to get really a deep down breakdown because the... The metal needs to be polished. I'm going to end up taking a lot more apart than I usually would on this. So you've seen, I did a video on a Chinese one of these, I want to say. Maybe it was a U.S. It's, it's hard to keep track of what I service, folks. So if, if you keep better track than I can of probably of some of these videos. Speaking of keeping track, I have a lot of playlists. That's just the wrong size screwdriver. Um, so if you if you wanted to figure out something or you want to see all my Milo repairs or all my Dyson reviews, anything like that, um, 
there's a playlist for all that stuff. So definitely go check out the playlist section on my channel. I have some certain playlists highlighted on my blog spot, uh, but who uses the blog spot anymore, really? All right, we're gonna pull this apart. As you can see, there's plenty of hair and stuff, and this is part of the problem with direct air machines, is because they cool themselves in a non-filtered part, this ends up stirring a lot of dust and allergens for a lot of people. So it's one of the reasons they've gone away from this. It's one of the reasons why you saw or conclude that that motor breather filter. So there's my central vacuum. A lot of you ask what I use on my bench. I use a central vacuum. I'm not gonna mess around with a portable vacuum for bench use. Uh, and as you can see, this is just held in here with wire nuts. This probably had crimped uh, from the factory. Maybe not, but those are gonna go back together with tape. So there's, there's my crumb handle, that all separates. Really easy, right? Uh, and these machines have always been fairly easy to get in and service. So we're gonna go ahead and start popping this thing apart for service. So there are a couple ways we can do this. We're gonna first pop the nozzle off. So you want to turn your drill off all the way. Whoop. You can use an impact driver if you need to on this. Uh, my drill is pretty powerful. I don't really see a reason for that, but you, you can if you need to. After that, you're just going to kind of pull, and it just comes apart. Again, there's nothing special with how this is made or... All right, no bearing play, that's good. So you can see how the nozzle is attached on this particular Royal uh, screws. I, of course, you can see it's polybond. One of the problems with the Royal versus the Kirby is Kirby had the forethought to uh, go to a more modern fan. And by doing that, going to that plastic fan, what they did was make a more durable machine. Not the first version, but they eventually made a more durable machine. And a lot of you probably don't know this, but there's a gasket in there, and that gasket can rot over time. So there's the faceplate. It's all pitted. That will need to be polished. Um, but by going to a metal fan uh, versus a plastic fan, when Kirby went to that plastic fan, uh, they made it a lot more durable. These old Royal fans, it does not take a lot to break these. Uh, something you get in here can go off balance. The shafts tend to go off balance. There are a lot of things that can really mess this up a lot faster than any modern vacuum. Um, in fact, I would go as so far as to say that some of the Dysons might be more durable than this uh, design in terms of you know, what they could handle in terms of abuse. I know that's probably an unpopular thing, but, you know, that's just my two cents on this. Um, I really don't want to break this apart if I don't have to. Pulling the fan off these older model Royals requires hitting it with a hammer in the opposite direction. Let's pull rear cover off and all these screws are pretty self-explanatory where they go so if you feel lost make yourself a diagram but to me they're all really self-explanatory where they go So that comes off, and you can see it's a really small motor. Uh, and to give you an idea, here's a powerhead motor. It's really it's about twice the size, but it's, it's not particularly large, especially compared to a Kirby model. It's closer to like a Kirby o Omega Classic or something like that. Um, so yeah, in terms of pulling the rest of this apart, it has been a long time since I've been inside one of these. 
I believe the next step is pulling the fan off. Ugh. Where are my vice grips? Alright, there we go. That pulls off. Fan comes off. Blech. You can see the balancing marks on there. That is nasty. Let's get our central back and clean some of this up. And that just pulls right out, if you want to see what that looks like. Again, when I, I'm talking about the smallness of the motor, going back to that powerhead motor, you can see it's really not any bigger than that. So they, they did make bigger one, like more more amperage motors. Uh, it's like more better, but uh, higher amperage motors. But uh, whether or not those really clean better, to me, it's real negligible. So you can see all the crap in there gets stuck in there over the years. So it it's, it it sucks in and blows out the back. So it's basically circulating dirty air in the room, like so many of these machines. And that's why you hear these referred to as dirty air machines. Partially, part of it is because they actually touch the dirt with the fan, which a lot of vacuums don't do. Right. We're just pulling out what I can that looks like it needs to be washed or cleaned out. Pull out the... Should be one more spacer in there. So let's pull out, let's suck out all the animal hair. That's super nasty. <laughs> Yuck. Again, central vacuum, a must. And you can see the bearing that you oil in the rear through this red oil slot. So that's all going to get blown out of compressed air. That's all going to get washed over there. And then when we reassemble, we'll turn the camera on. Well, we're in my grinding room of my shop, which if you're not familiar with my shop, but I have a grinding room. Um, move that VFD. Uh, so the back of this is really good. Very few big scrapes along this. So I will just have to polish this with a wheel. Actually, we'll probably be using a soft cotton wheel on this, not the cardboard wheel. But the rest of this is not so nice. We have some really deep gouges in here. And as you can see, I've kind of started cleaning them up on one side. So the process is we're actually going to use a grinder. We're going to take the scratches off. And then once the scratches are off, we're going to polish that. Now the grinder right now is set up for 800 grit. I can go up to about 10,000 grit with the grinder before I have to hit the polishing wheel. The other thing I'm going to do is, there it is. I've got the pieces down here in a box. You can see where Royal cheaped out and didn't polish a lot of visible parts on the machine. 
Why this isn't part going to be visible? You definitely see this side uh, when you're using the machine because you use the machine. The machine. It's like that. So it's real weird that there's these unpolished edges that are visible. So I'm going to polish that as well. The aluminum appears to be better quality than Kirby, but the the actual fit and finish in the molding is not as good. So that's kind of strange as well. So let's get get to work. This is a lot of work. I'm going to actually cut the camera because this is probably about two to three hours worth of work here that we're going to be doing. We're about two hours into the polish. To give you an idea of what's starting to look like, how it's starting to come out compared to when I left it. You can see things like this are just really shiny, looking good. I think these parts probably look the best. So those are what those are going to look like when they're done. Um, I actually scratched the nozzle housing a little bit more with one of the other wheels. Uh, this wheel was just a little coarser than my grinding wheel, which made a lot more work for me in just part of the nozzle, not the rest of the vacuum. But so this is going to be this is going to probably take me an extra half hour just to get all those out. Kind of a shame, but. Uh, that's what happens when you experiment. And uh, it's important to keep wipe to wipe the polish off this when you're working with this, so you know that you're not just over polishing it. This was completely black, and I thought I wasn't polishing. Of course, after I wiped it off, it's shiny as can be. So keep that in mind. And I still have this part. Well, I probably have about an hours worth of work to do. Still have the motor housing. Appreciate all your continued support on Patreon and on the channel. If you like this video, please like. Even better, share. That helps us out a lot. And if this video helped us, helped you, consider joining our Patreon. And have yourself a wonderful day.